Welcome to our video about the eclipses in 2023. And in this video, we want to focus on the eclipses happening in April and May on the Taurus, Scorpio and Aries Libra axis. And yeah, first of all, we want to start with a little brief introduction of the three of us, and then we will dive deep into the darkness and light of the eclipses. Um, yeah, maybe I start. I'm Verena Borel. I'm an evolutionary astrologer and I'm living in Austria. Hi, I am Jamie Goldstein. I'm an intuitive astrologer and I'm living in Oregon in the U.S. And I'm Martha Alter Hines and I'm also an astrologer based in evolutionary astrology, but then bringing in various other things including the spirit world and yeah yeah i think that's true for I all agree. three of us. <laughs> um and uh and i live in southern southwestern the west coast of california <laughs> in the united states also yeah. yeah yeah and i think we we wanted to start with just giving you as somebody who watches our video yeah, a perspective on what we um, experience as overarching topics or overarching themes um, of these eclipses. And I think that it is very important to say at the beginning that we are talking from our perspective, from what we see in the charts, but also what we receive from our um, intuitive guidance from spirit world, as Martha said. And so, um, Feel free to take what resonates with you and leave the rest and um, feel into your own body, into your own heart, um, what, yeah, what is right for you and how you experience it. So it's not about telling you how it is. Um, it's more giving you the opportunity to feel and tune into these eclipse energies um, by yourself. And... Yeah, I don't know who wants to start with the overarching themes. Maybe Jamie, do you want to go? Yeah. Yeah, I have a little background noise happening where I'm at, so hopefully it's not hopefully it's not too much right now, but oh my gosh, I mean there's so much to explore with this eclipse season. I because it is, it's straddling two accesses, the Taurus Scorpio access and the Aries Libra access. So I feel like it's very multifaceted and multidimensional. But what I think is so interesting about this eclipse season is our first eclipse at uh, the solar eclipse is at 29 degrees of Aries. And this is giving us a first glimpse and, and feel of the lunar nodes, which will move into the Aries Libra access here uh, in July of this year, if you're working with the true nodes. And so I, I feel like this is really going to give us this, we're getting this kind of uh, burst of this new energy being a uh, Aries solar eclipse. Uh, so this is like a new moon that's very amplified. It's like a new moon that's accelerated and on steroids at this anoretic degree of Aries, this karmic completion degree of, of Aries. And so there's all of this, I mean, what I just intuitively sense as the main theme, there's all this new energy coming in and flowing in. And at the same time, we're also having all of this releasing energy too, being at this karmic completion degree, as well as the eclipse season you know, the, the, this Aries solar eclipse and then the lunar nodes will be, you know, squaring Pluto this whole eclipse season as well. So there's all of this, uh, I, I feel like, uh, letting die within us, what's no longer in alignment with our highest path forward. And it feels like as Pluto has just kind of moved from, Capricorn into Aquarius and Pluto sitting at zero degrees of Aquarius right now and will be moving back into Capricorn. It's like 
whatever from the um, old paradigm, you might call it, you know, the dominator paradigm, the patriarchal paradigm, this old paradigm that is not serving us as a collective, that is not serving us on a personal level, whatever has kind of been living within us still from the conditioning that we've kind of been conditioned into living in that old world, whatever's still living within us, I feel like it's this big uh, acceleration of letting that die within us so we can rebirth to right the the age of Aquarius this new age this new way of being in right relationship with humanity the earth all beings and so there's this letting go and then all this new energy coming in and I feel like uh, one of the other kind of big themes of this eclipse season is what I find so interesting is that with the uh, the the Scorpio lunar eclipse that we'll have in just a few weeks, or in, uh, in I think you know May fifth, sixth, depending on where you're living in the world, that the sun is you know four degrees from Uranus. That eclipse is at fourteen degrees Taurus. Scorpio and Uranus is at 18 degrees of Taurus. Now this is the degree where we had the Uranus North Node conjunction and uh in in July and August of 2022. And what is so fascinating is I pulled up the charts together. Uranus is back to not only the degree, but the arc minute where Uranus was at that moment of the Uranus North Node conjunction. So what I feel, because Uranus went retrograde not too long after that Uranus North Node conjunction, it's like it started to open up some new possibilities that are in alignment with our highest truth, right? Like higher timelines opening up to support our evolutionary path forward. And it's like we've been in this time of like kind of accessing them, but then having to clear out a lot. And now I feel like with that eclipse and Uranus at that same degree in arc minute, it's opening up some higher path for us to really Taurus ground in and embody. So I think that's really exciting about this eclipse season. And so, yeah, I think those are the big themes that are, that are kind of standing out to me. Wow. Yeah, completely. I, I, so is it, do you want to go Martha or shall I? I, I have things I can say, but it seems like you're ready. So go for it. Okay. Yes. And I'm, then my Venus and we both have Venus and Aries, so. <laughs> um, okay, then, then I say something and then, yeah, stop me when I went too far, Martha. Um, I completely agree with everything you said, Jamie. And I think what is maybe when you are watching this, the North Node um, Uranus, it was at the end of July 2022, right? Yeah. Um, with Mars too, right? Yeah. You're talking with about Mars, you. Uranus, North Node was at the end of July, beginning of August. Okay, what I'm feeling, so I'm completely agreeing with everything you said, Dami. And with this um, eclipse season in um, April and May, and also the eclipse season that we have in October, I really have this feeling, and we talked about that before we pushed the recording button, is for me, it feels because we have these eclipses that are both mixed. So we have a solar eclipse in Aries, followed by a lunar eclipse in Scorpio. And then in October, we have a solar eclipse in Libra and a lunar eclipse in Taurus. So we have both eclipse seasons are a mix between the lunar nodes that are shifting from Taurus Scorpio into Aries Libra and additionally we have for the whole year in a 10 degree orb Pluto the ruler of Scorpio is um, squaring the lunar nodes and I have really this feeling that um, when we zoom out we are in a larger period of being between ages being between the worlds being between um, different systems, different lives, different versions of ourselves individually and collectively really between ages. And I have the feeling that the year 2023 is like the height, like the, yeah, like 
the density of this in-between phase. So it's really a year of being in between your old identity, your new self, old structures, new ways to live, to love, to work. And I have this feeling with these eclipses that it is really this overarching topic of your future self is already here, but now you need to grow into it and to embody it. And therefore, so much what is still here, what is still holding you back, what is still um, from past lives, from your conditioning, around dominator culture, around patriarchy, everything what is not really your true soul self has to go. And I feel, especially with this eclipses in April and May, that and I, I, I have written down for um, the April solar eclipse, April 19th solar eclipse, new moon in 29 degree Aries. And Aries ruler Mars is in Cancer at that time. And I have really this feeling of it's the birth of a new self. So we are birthing a new Aries personality, a new self. It's really the initiation of a new version of ourself a new version of our world and then two weeks later we have this powerful lunar eclipse in scorpio and this is again a shedding of skin so we are initiating in this new version and then we are noticing okay what is still in my bag that is holding me back that is old that are layers that are no longer serving me and I experienced that this whole year is a dance between, and Pluto dancing between Aquarius and Capricorn too, it's a dance between, that is, and I feel that so strong with Aries, that we had the new moon in Aries, and the second new moon, which is a solar eclipse, all of these, then we have the um, Aries, these, the whole March, this whole Aries stadium, now we had the Jupiter Casimian Aries, we have this Aries initiation power that is really saying, okay, it's time to become a new version of yourself. It's time to really start a new cycle, but we are not yet there. So it's this year is still this feeling of, okay, here are you, my future version, but I still have to embody it, grow into it, work with my old conditionings, work, work with my old patterns. Um, and this is all the same on a collective level. So I can imagine that new ideas arise, new ideas show up, but it's not yet here. So we have to do some more grounding, purging, healing work. Um, so that we can slowly but surely, and I feel this slowly but surely very emphasized then with Jupiter going into Taurus, slowly but surely make changes that are not only in alignment, but also that are for, yeah, that are stable, not the hasty head over heels, airy style, but with a certain ground and stability and in alignment with our values. Um, yeah, I stop here. Um, Martha. Yes, everything both of you are saying is um, super in line with what I'm feeling. And and I made, I made a whole video about some of this two, three days ago. Um, but I can, I can describe something that's going on for me personally, because as you guys are talking, I'm, I'm feeling this very strongly, this personal thing. And I think it's relevant. And Jamie, what you said about Uranus now being at that exact same minute of where it was at that conjunction uh, that I did not realize that. And that is fascinating. <laughs> it's putting a whole nother layer on my own personal experience, but um. Well, I actually not, shall we like actually look at this chart of this um it's the lunar eclipse right 
Is it at the lunar eclipse that Uranus? Yeah, is? that's where Uranus comes back. 18 degrees and I believe 41 arc minutes. Yeah, that's where that yeah. Uranus North Node conjunction was. Yeah. Yeah. Martha, I did not want to interrupt you. Sorry. It's okay. <laughs> um, do you want to look at the chart or do you want to? No, I just wanted to, because we, we were talking about this all the time and I had the feeling that if every, every uh, anyone has not the chart in mind that we just have it one time here. Cool. Okay. Um, yeah. So for me, what's uh, been really, what I've been feeling personally is the sense of um, the spirit world has been telling me, but I think this is true for probably a lot of us, that th the structures that I have embodied up until this moment in my life no longer serve the the being that I need to be on the planet moving forward. So in my personal life, my dad happened to die uh, right after the eclipses last fall. He died December 11th, 2022 really unexpectedly out of kind of nowhere. Um, and to me, it felt very, when I look back on it, it was death. There were a series of things that happened in my own life, including my dad's death right around the eclipse time. And that death definitely feels like it was part of things that needed to shift for whatever reason. So, so since my dad died, I've had the series of experiences internally and externally that are um really really about me 100% radically letting go of this karma with my dad the karma with the masculine in general and and what i then get got told was on um the day of the new moon at zero degrees of Aries, I, I say this with a caveat that I feel a little bit vulnerable saying it. I feel a little weird saying it, but it's the truth of what I was told. So I'm going to say it out loud on a video on YouTube. Um, what I was told was that that moment, like that day was the zero point of new earth, which again, I say that with lots and lots of hesitation. <laughs> The human me thinks that sounds very strange, but that's what I was told. So, and that's what I feel in a certain way in myself is like, that was a moment of, for me personally, but I think on the planet in a certain way of like the start, it was a new moon at the, the, uh, Aries equinox at zero degrees of Aries, <laughs> my very, very beginning point of the whole Zodiac. Right. So um then on a personal level what i've been feeling again is the sense of and again i'm going to use language that's very woo woo and very out there and the human me has lots of hesitation to say these things but i feel like i'm supposed to so i will um it's like i'm i keep getting this image of myself but again i think lots of us as a crystalline a crystalline structure that's clear and clean and as we are clearing like the 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 south node in scorpio squared by pluto which which you know pluto ruling that south node in scorpio is this radical letting go letting go letting go letting go letting go so that we can fully become what i'm told is so we can fully become the crystalline structure being with total clarity that we are meant to be in this lifetime moving forward. And then that crystalline clear structure to me is that zero Aries point. It's that like so purely new that we can't possibly know what it is yet, like at all. And I don't know what I, I mean, I, I have a sense sort of of what I'm meant to be, but I think what I'm really, what I'm meant to be, and I think many of us is just is that, crystalline structure being period <laughs> that then can like move with the energetics of whatever happens to be needed in each moment um 
And that's a very different way of being than I've ever been. And that probably lots of us have ever been because we operate typically with, you know, the structures that are created by society, our family, all of that. Not that, not that I can suddenly switch and not be human. That's, that also, (laughs) that's very extreme and not what I mean. Um, But, and one other thing I want to throw in there is two other elements that are playing really strongly in these, in these eclipses are um, Eris Zena, which will be conjunct the North node on, I mean, sorry, will be conjunct the new moon on this eclipse on April 19th, 2023. And Jupiter will be conjunct Eris Zena actually also on the eclipse. And then next fall, Eris Zena will be precisely conjunct the North node on the eclipses. Um, so she's playing out really strongly and that's a whole story. And I'm giving a free talk on that, on Aristina next Thursday, uh, mm-hmm. April, tw- the day after the eclipse, April 20th. So, um, anybody can be in contact with me to come to that, to hear lots about Aristina. And yeah. We have her on the conversation with the goddesses series. Yes. And she will be one of the goddesses that Verena and I focus on, um, in about, three or four months uh, in our conversations with the goddess series. Yeah. So she's huge in these, all of these eclipses, huge, huge, huge. And, and she, she is uh, one of the Kuiper belt objects. So she's one of the, one of the, the planetary bodies. She's a dwarf planet, but she's out there in the orbit sort of with Pluto. Although Erisina is way, way, way much longer orbit than, than Pluto does. But Another Kuiper Belt object that is huge on in these these eclipses, especially the one in April, is Haumea. And again, I in that video I made a few days ago, I talk all about Haumea. So I won't go like super into her right this second, but Haumea is currently at zero degrees of Scorpio. So uh the south node is, is at four degrees of Scorpio and so the south node is moving toward Haumea and Haumea is going retrograde so Haumea is currently um squaring Pluto and she is doing a dance between Scorpio and Libra at the exact same time that Pluto is doing a, this dance between a, Aquarius and Capricorn so she, so Haumea and Pluto are in this like long-term square of each other for a while right now um and Haumea at zero degrees of Scorpio is almost exactly opposite that new moon on the eclipse on April 19th. And Haumea, again, just in a really brief version of her, she is a goddess associated with, um, she's a creator goddess and she births things from her whole body, her whole being. So when I was feeling into this, especially the eclipse coming up next week on April 19th, it it feels to me like this this whole dynamic of if we're doing this purging, clearing, 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 so we can be that crystalline clear being that we are, then I think some natural questions that come up are, first of all, what is it that we're supposed to be? Second, how are we supposed to be that, right? And I think the what, I just don't know, <laughs> other than that we're supposed to be this the crystalline divine being that we are. And the how, I think the only real how is simply to be in the moment and to do our best to continue to follow what we feel the divine is asking of us, including that clearing and just being really present. But I think the Haumea and some other stuff and and the Erisina and some other factors in the, the astrology point me to the sense also of the how being really about coming back into our bodies and back into ourselves as beings that are that are not only in our rational brain right like the Haumea energy I love Haumea so much Natalie I realize she is conjunct my uh, ascendant Hygieia and moon (laughs) she's really strong for me personally Natalie um but she's this energy of you know, creation comes from our being, not from our brain typically. And so as we're trying to sit with, okay, what are we being asked to be or how are we being asked to be? I, 
one one key again i my real answer is i don't know but one key i think is is that the how needs to be coming from all of who we are not you know not just the brain and so like down here somewhere it's it's all of us <laughs> Yeah. So there we go. Can I just share like one thing I'm feeling inspired about by listening to you, Martha? I love this so much. I love getting to listen to you, Verena and Martha, because I'm like all these like new light bulbs kind of going off in connections as I'm listening. But that like Martha, everything you're sharing with that resonates so much. Um, And that zero point energy of the, the equinox and that Aries new moon. I totally feel that resonance in my being of, I feel the resonance of what's intuitively coming through from the spirit realm for you. And also, I mean, this goes with what you were sharing, Verena, what you were just sharing, Martha, this, it's like, I, this is a kind of a big theme I've been feeling for this eclipse season is that, you know, through, and I, and I think Pluto squaring this first eclipse, the solar eclipse is really supporting us. Yes, it may bring an intensity, And I also feel like it's so supportive to our evolutionary growth because of pretty much all of us, the world that we've lived in and the old structures that we've lived in, very few of us, you know, have really been able to fully show up in our authentic essence because we have so much conditioning. And, you know, I even think Venus being in a Capricorn cycle is really relevant to the conversation here. I know that's a whole nother topic, but it's relevant to the shifting of the Capricorn energy and the old paradigm into this new way of being in relationship with earth, humanity, all beings, right? But it's, we have so much conditioning around, um, yeah, like, what we're supposed to do, how we're supposed to show up in the world, achievement, success, you know, this, like all of these, all of these, all of this conditioning we've been conditioned into in this like patriarchal paradigm. And with so, so few of us are actually, you know, feel comfortable showing up in our own, like, you know, radical authenticity. And I do believe, and this is kind of where this Aries solar eclipse comes in. Aries is the, I am that I am. It's, it, it, to me, the purest expression of Aries is just spirits moving through me. And I'm really attuned to that present moment of spirit moving through. I'm not filtering myself like, oh my gosh, is how I'm showing up going to fit into, you know, how I'm supposed to show up in the world. So this Venus and Capricorn cycle is this grander cycle that's been going since January, 2022. And we'll go to August of this year, 2023. And it's been helping us to, let die within us because that this Venus cycle was starting in conjunction with Pluto. Venus made three aspects to Pluto, pre-retrograde, retrograde, and post-retrograde, letting die within us where the old paradigm is still playing out. Where are we inhibiting ourselves? Where are we pushing ourselves that is not in alignment with our authenticity, letting that die within us and to rebirth and to how to create from a place of being and alignment, how to create from our heart and our heart wisdom and our body wisdom. So we have all of this you know, where we've been over pushing, overworking, over striving, trying to show up in the, you know, the right way, whatever it is. And I feel like with this eclipse in Aries, it is, it's just this new moon is like, that is a solar eclipse. So super amplified showing up as I am that I am. And when we're not filtering ourselves and inhibiting ourselves and, and, and trying to, you know, fit into the, the current structures in the right way, when we can just be who we are and let spirit move through and moving with that flow of spirit. It's like, wow, look what we could create within our lives and within the world. And so that just, that just kind of made me think of that. And I feel like Pluto there in that square is so supportive. Yeah. It may be intense because that old programming that, and this is, I mean, this is going to go through that Scorpio solar or that Scorpio lunar eclipse as well. Yeah. That old programming is coming up to be, to shed, to be transmuted. And this whole new way of being, like you said, Verena, like our future self, our authentic essence is here within us already. This is a matter of bringing it out and embodying it. So yeah, I don't know. That just made me think of that, just hearing both of your shares. I love that. And I would love to directly, yeah, continue your 
thoughts. And first of all, Jamie and I, we did a beautiful video about Venus and Capricorn, the Venus and Capricorn cycle. Maybe we want to link that below the video um, because yeah. th there we really go deep into these deconditioning processes within this Venus and Capricorn cycle. And what I'm feeling, what you just said, this, um, yeah, this Aries energy, the healing of the Aries energy, and starting with this solar eclipse in Aries in a square to Pluto in Aquarius, and it's an eclipse. That means, I mean, it's a solar eclipse. And I have the feeling with Pluto together that to birth a new self, we must experience the death of our old self. And the solar solar eclipses, I mean, it's always this play between darkness and light. Mm -hmm. And it might be the case that we experience something like an ego death or something like this feeling of, okay, now there's really, now I have, we, we went through these intense Scorpio Taurus eclipses the whole last year. And maybe now we are ready to let go another layer of, yeah, a conditioned self and really get this feeling and this woof, this, yeah, this like a, like a pre-taste what it can be and how it can feel when I'm really in my Aries energy. And yes, we will go back and yes, old patterns will come up again. But I think it is like a moment where we can really step into this um and I always experience eclipses like portals, like portals, and it's on the north node. So it's really this portal energy where we can already time. I don't like to say timeline jump. It's more like getting a glimpse of this new era, this new self, and then allowing ourselves to perch during the lunar eclipse. And then comes the new moon in Taurus. And then it is all about, I think, okay, okay, slowing down, finding stability. Um, what are my values? Who, how is my body doing? Because, um, yeah, one thing I want to say about the body, and then I just want to say um, another thing about the Aries Libra thing. I think that what you so beautifully shared, Martha, with this crystalline structure and this clarity and this new way to be here I think that what I experience so strongly in my personal life is that um my I always have the feeling that my soul and my spirit are so much faster than my body and that there's still trauma in my body and then there's still fear in my body and that Often it's really, I think it's really about, and I feel that so strongly with then Jupiter going into Taurus and all of this beautiful Taurus energy, Uranus and Taurus. I really feel that there is something around bridging, bridging maybe don't let there be a gap. So go into the new holistically and with your body too. So take your body with you. And this attuning and listening and learning i actually will do a course starting in may where it's about somatic work and learning to listening better to your body because it's a personal topic for me um and i think i feel it and i see it with my clients i see it um with many people that often we wanna expand and grow on a spiritual and soul level but our body has not the capacity. And meeting our body where it is, because there is maybe a trauma reaction. There is maybe contraction. We want to expand, but our body contracts. And I think it's really about meeting our body where it is and allowing ourselves the time. And because of that, I think it's really, we must or we should, or we can um, zoom a little bit out and see the bigger picture, see these overarching themes. And I love astrology for that because we see, okay, the whole year is this process. And I have the feeling that the whole time with the lunar nodes in Aries and Libra is actually a preparation 
for the time when Saturn and Neptune go into Aries. So I have the feeling that mm. with, the, with the eclipses on the, lo uh, the lunar nodes in Scorpio and Taurus, it was really around going into our underworld, digging deep, preparing the ground, really um, preparing our soul and soil. And then with Libra, Aries, I have the feeling, and by the way, the whole Scor Pluto and Scorpio generation get their South Node conjunction over their Pluto, so deep purging. Now with the South Node and Libra, the whole Pluto and Libra generation will get the clearing and deep purging, and we are getting prepared for the new. And with the South Node in Libra, I feel that now it's all about where do I stick? And that is what you already said, Jamie. Where do I still live to fulfill expectations of others? Where I do still stick to a life that is actually not my life? Where do I still have patterns around and that is so often completely unconscious? Where do I think I have to fulfill certain expectations that I have internalized or that other people have to have um, yeah, towards me or that society has towards me. So many of my clients are struggling at the moment with these topics, especially the Pluto and Libra generation with, okay, but others expect this and that from me, but I actually don't feel like doing that. And I think it's a collective um, evolution um, towards what is really my Aries energy? What is this I am that I am? And where do I stick to feel loved and to feel safe um, to this idea that I have to fulfill expectations? And I really think that it is the whole next two years are around letting go of internalized expectations, of self expectations, of expectations of others, and really allow ourselves to experience a rebirth and to become crystal clear and to really um, become this I am that I am and allow others to do the same. And um, yeah, I think it is a longer process and it is a process um, where we should not forget to take our time and to trust our natural pace um, and not fall into the shadow of Aries, um, which is to be too hasty, to be too um, pushing forward. And especially with Chiron and Aries. And I think it's really interesting that we have at this first solar eclipse in Aries, Aries ruler Mars in super nurturing Cancer, which is so okay. And I think, I don't know, Martha, you said it in one of your videos, you said that Aries, that a healthy Aries energy knows that it is not about linear pushing, but that a healthy Aries energy also knows about cycles and that Mars has a cycle too. So it's not about, and you said that, Martha, I, I just um, repeat what your thoughts, because that really was, yeah. You are right. And then Mars is in Cancer, which is yin and which is all about um, a cyclical way of a cardinal sign, but a cyclical way of living. Yeah. yeah. And Mars squared a Chiron with this. Mm. Mm. Oh, wow. I hadn't even thought about that part. Yeah, that that's those were the two things I was just about to bring up are, are exactly what you just said, Rena, about um, I just feel like I want to say again, right? Like the, that Aries, when we're in that Aries energy, we can have this concept that that progress is linear. And in reality, it's not. Like when we look at nature, it you know, like what what in nature is a straight line that never stops, <laughs> that, that just like goes as a straight line. I mean, waves are not a straight line. Um, orbits are not a straight line flowers I mean there I can't think of anything that's only a line maybe there's something I don't know what it is but we're not a straight line <laughs> nothing in us is a straight line 
So why should our progress be straight line? It's I don't think it's how we work. And so I keep keep reminding myself that also that like even in that image of of what I get told by the spirit world that I need to be this crystalline being who's going to be clear and open and all of that. It's not an instantaneous thing and it's not meant to be in and I want it to be. Again, I have South Node and Aries, Brina and I both have South Node and Aries and Venus and Aries. <laughs> I have North Node and Aries. Oh, sorry. You have North Node. You have North Node. I have South Node. You have North <laughs> Node and Aries. And we both have Venus and Aries, right? So, um, yeah, I just want to do it. Just get it over with. Boom. And that's that's not reality. And that's not actually the healthy version of Aries even. So um, so I was thinking about that and the fact that, yeah, like th that, that I love, I love, love, love that. Pluto is is doing a dance between Aquarius and Capricorn because when it comes back into Capricorn I feel like part of the medicine in that is that it's reminding us that progress needs to come back into the the structures and the roundedness and all of that um and then we can move back into the Aquarian stuff too but but then the the part 2 of what I was thinking that you kind of touched on also Verena is is that yeah Chiron has been playing a really big role this year this month and it's going to be playing a really big role even a bigger role as the north node moves into Aries because Chiron is in Aries and so therefore the north node and Chiron will be conjunct I think it's February of 2024 but um but during the middle of these two Aries um new moons that we the we had we just had that new moon at zero degrees of Aries and then we're about to have this eclipse at 29 degrees of Aries and in the middle of that we had the Chiron Jupiter Vesta mm -hmm. Estrella conjunction I might be forgetting one there's a whole bunch of them sitting right Diana, there Diana Juno take them yeah, all yeah yeah all, all <laughs> of the whole like party at the middle of Aries with Chiron and Jupiter and um and Chiron was conjunct the sun on the full moon in Libra that we just had, right? So it's like this Chiron energy has been so strong. And again, I can feel that in my own life because one component of Chiron energy is ancestral healing. So it's like, I feel like it's among the two big things I feel Chiron doing for me personally. And again, I'm sure there's many, many other components here, but number one, I feel like Chiron brings us back to the reality that we are uh vulnerable like that we have our own wounding wounding and hurt that we can't pretend doesn't exist and so it brings me back to humility it brings me back to the reality that i am human that i am an animal that i am earth that i am vulnerable and that my vulnerability is actually a huge part of what's needed in, on the planet like if i tried to pretend that i was perfect or couldn't be hurt or something I don't think I actually could serve as well yeah. and then um and then number two in my own life a lot of this this Pluto squaring the nodes south node and Scorpio you know the letting go has has come through a ton of ancestral healing stuff that I've been doing with my family actually very directly and really really beautiful things that have been moving in my own world. Um, but, and, and I can just say for me personally, Pluto is act, has actually been squaring my natal Chiron. So there's that going on <laughs> for me also, but I think just collectively the Chiron energy is really, really strong right now and will continue to be. And it's a, I love Chiron. It's so beautiful. And yeah. Mm, I love that. And this kind of brings me to one of like hearing both of you, speak is that like I think one of the big themes of this eclipse season is it is like the revival of our life force energy that has been suppressed that's been splintered off you know and it really is a, a very much a product of this old paradigm that is falling away and as we're rebirthing this new paradigm this new way of being in relationship to the world in one another and life itself it's like this revival of our life force energy because Aries is that cardinal spark of life it represents that animating spark of life and Aries is that I am when we are not when, we, when it does not feel safe 
to be in our I am, we suppress our life force energy when we're suppressing authentic aspects of self and authentic ways of being in relationship with life itself. Where we're, our, our life force energy gets suppressed. I mean, it's happening unconsciously, but it gets suppressed. So with the healing that we're experiencing and the more and more it feels safe and this brings in Verena so much of what you said, the somatic work, the feeling safe to be in our body, feeling safe to be the I am that I am and be in relationship with the flow of life in an, in, an, in an authentic way. It opens up the flow of our life force energy because Aries is very much connected to the flow of our life force energy, which is like, it is cyclical in nature. Like you spoke to Martha and that Verena that you spoke to as well. And I feel like this Chiron and Aries, one of the deeper things here is it is the healing of our relationship to our life force energy, the relationship to self, which is opening up that flow of our life force energy and our ability to be in flow with life. When we're in, when we have this like, beautiful flow of our life force energy we're in we're able to be in flow with the natural rhythms and cycles of life then we don't have to do the shadow areas which is to push and force and over will we can actually really Aries is like to me letting spirit move through us and being in like almost in harmony with that flow of spirit, how to move energy up and out into the world. And so I see this 29 degree Aries solar eclipse as this really powerful, like revival of our life force energy. I think Mars and Cancer in square to Chiron is a big piece to this as well. There's this healing to our Mars, our assertive, go-getter, you know, masculine kind of energy here. And it's being sourced in cancer that's being sourced in the waters of the divine feminine, the divine mother. And so we can see some healing here with this eclipse season of really kind of turning inward and being sourced by the waters of our own divine feminine however you would connect to the divine feminine, the divine mother energy. It's like Mars, our inner Mars is receiving healing through that divine feminine, that divine mother energy. How can we nourish ourselves? How can we nurture ourselves? And how can we in square to Chiron really nurture our authenticity? What, what, you know, if, what, what do we need to feel safe to show up in the, I am, that I am. And so I see all of this beautiful, like life force energy wanting to return to us that maybe we've had to suppress and splinter off, you know, often unconsciously due to previous traumas, but that there's this energy supporting the healing that we can kind of take up space as, as who we are, which I think is really exciting because Aries is about just, you know, it's living in the flow of spirit, moving and, and really being in being, we're moving in the direction of what inspires us, what lights us up. And Aries is, it opens new pathways, right? And so when we are in the I am that I am, when we're lit up with life force energy, that's a magnetic energy. That's an attractive energy. It opens up. It's like where we didn't see any opportunities or any possibilities. All of a sudden, when we just move in the direction of what lights us up, what inspires us, new opportunities come out of nowhere. It's like we just align with them. So there's something here about we've lived in this paradigm where, where we've not really had, most people haven't had the opportunity to do that. And the more that we can allow that to come back and nurture, right? Mars and Cancer nurturing what inspires us, nurturing what lights us up. It's like, wow, I just see so many opportunities opening up that are in alignment with our higher self, kind of wanting to wanting to come through here. So, yeah. Yeah, I love that, Jamie. And thank you so much about your, um, yeah, your sharing your thoughts around Aries, because I actually wanted um, to say, and I have, I have done a whole YouTube video. I think it is called, um, I named it, um, the energy of every season 2023 and i did a podcast episode in german language to the first aries new moon um which is where i talked in depth about this idea of how can we relate to aries in a new way in regard to self-leadership so jeffrey was 
Reed Green, um, the founder of evolutionary astrology, said about Mars. Mars is the leading edge of our soul's evolution. And I actually love this description of Mars. Mars, Aries, is the ruler of Aries. And I have the feeling that we we live in, we have, I mean, I personally, I have Jupiter conjunct my North Node in Aries, conjunct my Venus in Aries. So I know from myself that I experienced past life where I had to fight where I was on the battlefield in complete fight trauma mode. And I think we experienced in past lives, in our history, on a collective level, um, humankind experienced Aries energy in a way of um, actually not this healthy leadership quality of of Aries this this healthy young energy that initiate that knows it comes from source so I think it's really um interesting too that um at the solar um eclipse in Aries we have Mars Aries ruler in a trine to Saturn and Pisces so um we have this idea with Aries we are coming out of the cosmic womb and we now decided as a cosmic soul, as the all that is, we decided to incarnate as this spark of light on planet Earth, to bring that what wants to come through it into karnas, in, in flesh. Karnas is Latin for flesh, and bring it into the Earth and enter new territories. And I think there is something so beautiful around Aries and around this idea of self-leadership, but we are actually afraid. And I see I see it with my clients um, that I had over the months when we had these intense Aries energies. Topics around, I'm so afraid to be me. I'm so afraid to be rejected when I'm me. I am actually afraid of my own strength. I'm afraid of my own power. And I think that many of us, maybe almost all of us, had um, past lives and past experiences in both extremes. So being um, the victim and being the oppressor. And I think that there is something to bring into balance, to purge, to heal around our own Mars, young, fire energy, so that we learn to channel it in a very, very aligned way and neither repress ourselves and go into the shadow of Libra, so people pleasing or go into the shadow of um, Capricorn, um, the oppression and the depression, or go into the shadow of Cancer, the passive aggressiveness, but really own our own strength. But really yeah it's it's about creating and i don't have yet an answer because it's a topic for me too how can we lead our life um in an authentic but aligned way and not be in a in a way of domineering our own body others um mother earth so not being the dominator but also not being um not cutting ourselves off from our um divine masculine energy and thinking okay um i cannot because then i hurt others i think it's really a struggle with aries energy this fear of hurting others when i'm that i am that i am and I think there is so much healing around that. And there's so much um, on all levels to heal, on a soul level, on a mental level, but also on a body level. Having these maybe old patterns in our body of fear, of flight freeze, fawn um, responses. And I think that it's really this Aries energy in this year, I feel it so strongly. And we are coming just out of a Mars retrograde. And this Mars retrograde was in Gemini. And during the Mars retrograde in Gemini, the new Mars cycle started. So we are still in this, we are in a new Mars cycle, which is in Gemini. And I think Gemini is all about new ways, new ideas. Um, yeah, how can we um, 
lead our life and how can we be in this um, young fire energy in a way that is in complete alignment with um, source energy, with, um, yeah, in a loving way, actually. Yeah. Yeah, I'm having some thoughts relating to what you're saying and what Jamie was saying that tie, maybe ties it together. Um, so when Jamie's talking about air, the life force energy that comes with Aries and then you're you're talking about wanting to allow that energy to come through in a way that feels safe and all of that. What I'm thinking about also are these other themes um, this year and with these eclipses around life force energy. I think, I think I mentioned this in the video that the three of us did about Pluto in Aquarius. Um, but when Pluto entered Aquarius on March 23rd, Eros, the mm -hmm. asteroid Eros entered Aquarius on March 24th. So basically Eros was conjunct Pluto as it, as Pluto entered Aquarius. And, um, and now at the time of the May 5th eclipse, uh, well, okay. Over the next few weeks in general, Eros, no, sorry, actually through this whole next several months, <laughs> Um, Eros and Hygieia are going to do a dance. They're going to be mm -hmm. doing a dance back and forth with, you, with each other because they're both going to go retrograde in Aquarius. Well, basically they're doing a dance together in Aquarius, in the middle of Aquarius, especially. Um, and uh, so, and they will be in the middle of Aquarius, Hygieia and Eros will be in the middle of Aquarius squaring the full moon, the well, the sun and the moon. Um, and at the time of the eclipse on May 5th. So that, all of that, plus for me, the Venus retrograde in Leo, when it, when Venus goes retrograde, it will be precisely opposite Eros, precisely. Uh, so there's this, all of this Eros energy and then the Eros and Hygieia energy, which all together for me, again, brings me back to this reality of us, the life force energy being, so key and us redoing our relationship to the life force energy and um again dropping from our brain where we've been more centered maybe or encouraged to be centered down into our bodies and then also all the retro the the uh, mercury retrogrades in earth signs which we're, we're going to talk about in another video later uh plus tor uh um centaurus Jupiter going retrograde in Taurus later. And, and anyway, so many things, so many themes about bringing us back to our body, bringing us back to this, um, what I said earlier about the Haumea energy also, you know, that maybe the how of how we are being asked to move forward is maybe one of the keys. One of the keys I'm feeling is that it's about coming down into our bodies, coming down into the, like our full energy being and, and doing more than we have been with just the mind being the central focus. So yeah. those are my final thoughts. And <laughs> I, I have a feeling we're getting ready to wrap up here, but um, yeah, that's, that was what was on my mind. I love that you brought these streams together, Martha, and I'm completely, um, yeah, it resonates so strongly with me. This, um, it feels for me like, really inside of us coming into alignment with these I really have this image of a snake that is um, yeah letting go of old skins and bringing more and more into alignment our true soul self um, and I actually I created just a one-on-one -on -one offering a new one-on-one -on -one offering that I call soul self activation because I have the feeling that's really it's really it at the moment, this letting go of old layers and coming into our soul self. And that is not happening with one in one minute. It's it's a process and it's a bringing together our soul with our body too. So because we decided to be here. Um, yeah, I have, I, I feel pretty complete. Um, I don't know if, um, we should 
talk more about the Scorpio lunar eclipse, but I think that we have actually talked pretty much about both of the eclipses. I don't know. How do you feel, Jamie? Yeah, I, I feel good. I think it might be worth mentioning Uranus's effect or influence with the, the Scorpio lunar eclipse. Um, and if we kind of go back to the Taurus lunar eclipse last uh, last uh, eclipse season, the moon was right, right with Uranus at that lunar eclipse. Now with this eclipse, about six months later, we have the sun, a, a wider orb, but the sun is in conjunction with Uranus and eclipses are already kind of an unpredictable energy. They're accelerated. They speed up. Eclipses are very Uranian in nature in general. And so with Uranus there, it does amplify the more unpredictable kind of um, accelerated, fast moving change. I mean, Uranus is like the evolutionary change agent. Uranus is about uh, really the great awakener, right? The great liberator awakening to our higher mind, our highest truth. And so I feel like this eclipse season might bring some kind of unexpected um, maybe accelerated changes in our lives to really awaken to our highest truth. And so this is in Taurus, right? To embody our highest truth and is awakening the intelligence of our body wisdom on a new way or connecting to the intelligence of our body wisdom. I mean, it's always there. Just we, most of us have lived in a world where we haven't learned to connect to our body wisdom and Uranus and Taurus also connects to um, very much connects to the trauma that's stored within our body that might kind of keep us separated from our body wisdom. So there's all of this healing potential available here. But I think it's worth mentioning that there might be some unexpected, unpredictable, out of the blue kind of things happening. And I do believe they are in service to our highest evolution, but with the Uranian energy, it doesn't always feel like it while it's happening, which I think can be um, which can be notable. And I do feel with this eclipse season, a big thing is, and this is with eclipses, right? The best way to navigate them usually is to let go of expectations, letting go of things happening a certain way, because eclipses are like course corrections to our highest path. So if our ego is attached to this thing in my life is going to go this way, and the eclipse season kind of uh, course correct something differently, you know, when we can let go of our egoic attachments to the way things are supposed to be and to open up to just how things are unfolding in our lives. I do find th we, we, there, there's more, it, it helps with some of the intensity with the eclipse season. And I do feel with Uranus back at that, you know, 18 degrees, 41 arc minutes, where that Uranus North node conjunction was, I do feel that this is starting a cycle now. Uranus went retrograde and now came back. At the moment of this eclipse, where there's all this amplifying energy, I feel like there may be some big release to really open us up to our highest evolution, our highest path forward and how to Taurus, how to embody it, to ground it, to give it form and structure here in our physical world. Maybe some of these We've been inspired by things and it's kind of like the, the, the timeline has kind of been there, but more on the etheric realm. And now I feel like this eclipse, maybe not the day of, but I see opening a trajectory for the next six months to really kind of perhaps in a very physical way, ground in and really align with maybe some of these higher pathways, these higher timelines, new things opening up and new pathways opening up for our evolution. I love I all of <laughs> yes, I feel it. <sighs> yeah. And I just feel, I feel that the, what you're saying about just let it, let it, let it go. Don't try to have any preconceived, like I'm thinking of some things in myself where I'm like, okay, I should, maybe it should be like this and this. And, and then I, when I really tune in, I just get a, nope, <laughs> let that go. Nope. Let that go too. Nope. <laughs> just, you know, it, I felt this last fall with the eclipses. And I, I think I said this on a, on a video I did with Verena last fall, it was feeling like the eclipse season was like being on a swing when you're a kid and you're on a swing and you, you twist, 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 you know, to the top and then you let go. And then you're on the swing and you just go, 
<laughs> I'm feeling that similar energy right now as I'm feeling into these eclipses coming up of this sense of like when you do the you know letting go thing you it's so freeing you you have to let go of expectations in order to actually be able to just fly in that yeah like the full card in the tarot deck oh what'd you just say like the like the full card in the tarot deck it's like stepping off the cliff and you're in this free fall but you're opening up to infinite possibilities and what I think is so interesting, what I just wanted to add, and then I think we can, yeah, we can bring it to an end, um, that Venus, the ruler of Taurus um, and of Uranus and um, the sun at that time, is in Gemini. And it is on 27 degree Gemini, Squarian, Neptune and Pisces. And is um, we just had these Gemini, Neptune squares with Mars. And so Venus is now going over the area and the chart and the sky in our life where Mars had these intense retrogrades and these intense squares with Neptune. And I have the feeling that here is something that wants to, that there are new solutions, new ways, Venus in, in Gemini, new ways of thinking about things. Um, maybe um, seeing some heaviness with more lightness maybe this with venus and gemini answering to uranus and taurus i feel that there's maybe more this this curiosity what is actually the new or what what am i and um, this this really meeting ourselves like dating ourselves for the first time in a way so um and meeting others with curious and loving eyes venus and gemini and um I think that when I feel into the eclipse energy, because you brought this wonderful swirling um, image, I really have two things that are coming up. Um, and that is, I have the feeling that this eclipses are like, like a window to a new life or into the future. And you are like stepping out of the window and you are looking and you know that you go back, but it's like, this window into a new world and um this and this not being not being afraid or not being sad that you have to go back it's important that you get the first sense and then you can build upon going steadily into the new but i think it's really getting a sense for what is coming um and i think that during the whole eclipses it is so important to just allow yourself to be just with what is now and don't think too much into the future or into the past so really be with everything that is and when both of you said changes I already experienced in my body a sense of contraction so I think it is really important to be in a good connection to our body during this time so that we don't fall into, because of fear, fall into old patterns. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Yes to that. I love that. (laughs) Definitely. (laughs) Agreed. Uh, How do you feel? Shall we maybe um, make a last round where everyone says um, what they offer and how they can find us? Mm -hmm. Demi, do you want to start? Sure. Yeah. I offer readings. I also teach chart reading courses, um, but I don't have any courses up for registration right now because I'm in the middle of a course. But yeah, you can find me at astrologywithjamie.com. That's J-A-I-M-E if you're interested in readings and other offerings. And I have an email list where I share uh, like my newsletters as, as well. Thank you so much. Um, I have a new website, so you can now find everything I'm offering in one place. And it is in German language and in English language. So you can switch between the languages. And I'm offering um, one-on-one sessions. And this new container, which is the longer um, one-on-one guidance, the soul self activation. And my um, one-on-one sessions are based on evolutionary astrology, but I also work with the Akashic Records. So it's 
very in a very intuitive approach to evolutionary astrology. You can book that via my homepage. And it feels so good to say we are my homepage. So I had no website. So. And um, I teach astrology too. So there is um, my, I have two astrology courses that are especially for you if you want to learn astrology as an additional tool for your healing practices. So for example, if you are a yoga teacher or if you are a Reiki practitioner and you want to integrate astrology into your work to serve more holistically and more powerfully um yeah i have um one starter course the astro space holder starter course that is available at every time it is in german language but yeah you find all information on my homepage. and the best way to connect with you is via instagram and via my mailing list so sign up for my mailing list and you'll receive astro inspiration and news about my offerings and i have a beautiful offering together with martha um we have our beautiful workshop series conversations with the goddesses you can sign up at any time we started in january and we are doing this the whole year and beyond and we are covering every month one goddess asteroid or planetary body in a very embodied way so you not only learn about these goddess archetypes and their astrology but you really feel them into yourself um, we guide channeled meditation journeys and we have sharing circles and yeah maybe this is the way to go to you Martha yeah so um I have several things I'm working on but yes next week uh we have our Hygieia workshop actually in that in that goddess series that's next Tuesday but it's recorded so again you can sign up anytime um next Thursday I'm doing this free talk on Eris Zena and uh you can I will be sending out the zoom link to everybody on my email list so you can sign up for my email list at my website living the one com. Next Friday, <laughs> I have a very busy week next week, and then I'm going to be very quiet for about a month, and, and then I will explain why. But um, next Friday, I am actually holding an eclipse gathering, which is free for everyone in my membership, or you can come if you're not in the membership, but I have an Eventbrite sign up for that that I'll put with this video. Uh, so that's an eclipse gathering where we're going to learn about the eclipses more. We're going to go more in depth and look at some charts, and, and I'll do a channeled guided experience to really feel what the what might be alive for you personally in this eclipse season and and beyond um and then the big 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 gigantic thing i'm working on right now is uh i'm preparing for rebecoming the one 2023 so there it's a going to be a free symposium in june i did the first version of it last year which jamie and verena were both part of and um, I'm doing it again because there was a huge ask for that. Um, it was, you know, lots and lots of people signed up last year and people want it again. So we're doing it again. And um, most of my month of May will be dedicated to that. Most of my month of April is actually already dedicated to that. And But it is ready-ish to sign up. So if you really want to sign up now, you can. Um, you can go to my website again, Living the One Light dot com it's on there or you i'll put the link um the one thing you do get the instant you sign up is uh i decided to give you immediate access to an interview i did with melanie reinhardt speaking of chiron she's if you haven't heard of her she's a classic incredibly amazing astrologer who uh wrote one of the, the founding books about chiron in the, in the 80s and she's just a really wonderful beautiful human so I interviewed her for Rebecoming the One, and I'm a make I'm making that video available the instant you sign up for the symposium for free. Um, and then yeah, there's lots and lots of lots more I'll share about that symposium, but that's my big, big baby at the moment, and it will be birthed on June 1st. <laughs> so yeah, that's where my focus is. I forgot actually to say something. Um, first of all, please sign up for Rebecoming the One. It's amazing. It's really it's a gift that Martha is 
with that is coming through Martha into the world. So please sign up. And the other thing that I just forgot is, and um, I have a little gift, just a little one. I have a freebie. I have a Venus guide that you can download for free um, in English language or in German language. So I can link that below the video too. Um, and yeah, I think that feels complete for me. Is there anything else? I mean, I'm good. We are so happy that you watched our video and we will come back, the three of us, for a Mercury retrograde in Earth science video very soon. So subscribe to Jamie's channel, subscribe to Martha's channel, subscribe to my channel. Um, yeah, follow us on every channel you want to and you find all information in the description of the video. And yeah, we are grateful to hear from you. We are grateful if you want to share and like the video. And if you want to comment the video, we always answer to your comments. So we really appreciate if you take your time to watch our video and to give us feedback, if that lands for you, what are your experiences and thoughts. And yeah, I'm just grateful to be here with you all. And yeah, thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. <laughs> okay. Bye.